All right, there you go. Uh, Lucy here, and uh, her, her buddy is in the back room, because uh, I want to demonstrate a technique, and we just got done doing a, a practicing a focus exercise. So I'm going to show real quick what the focus exercise is. I'm going to have a bunch of treats in this hand and one treat in this hand. Put the dog between me. The dog's going to look at where the treat comes from. Focus. So when I do this, I'm going to go one step and then to their mouth and say focus when it touches, when it goes into her mouth. Now, can you give us a bag? Oh, look at that. What an awesome dog. All right, so basically what we want to do is we want to practice the focus inside like I just talked to the guardians about off camera. That's, that's fine. Um, and that's why I got the treat here to keep her looking away from the stimulus that's walking by. So we want to practice this until we can go one second, one, two, all the way 20 seconds and maintain the dog's focus here. At that point, we should be able to say focus and the dog just stops and looks up at us. When we have that, then we're going to practice it outside on walks. At first, we're going to stop and say, fo or say focus, stop, and then do the same exercise. But eventually, we want to be walking along and say focus and have a dog look up at us, and we take one step, and then we give the treat. And then two steps, and then we want to eventually get up to about 10 or 15 steps. Yes, you're doing very good. Uh, so the dog is maintaining its visual acuity to us and ignoring its surroundings. Well, once you get to that point, we're going to go through the technique that I got out of the closest thing do I have to a mentor, which is Karen London. Uh, she's a dog behaviorist. She's one of the PhDs. She's the heavy, heavy hitters. She's in Arizona, and uh, she has written a co-authored a book called Feisty Fido Solutions for the Leash Reactive Dog. I'll probably have it linked underneath this video. So basically, what she wants to do is use the principle of counter conditioning to uh, get the dog to uh, look away from another dog and look up at its guardian. Now, what we're going to, well, it's a little bit of a principle of counter conditioning, not de definitively, but um, what we're going to do is we want to uh, get our dog where we can, like I said, say focus and it looks up at us immediately. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to find a location where I can have this triangle in front of me. I know she's looking at it, but this is my train. I can see from here to here. And there's a path, let's say, that goes this way, and it's a dog path or just a biking path where a lot of people walk their dogs at five o'clock traffic or whatever it is. So over here, outside of the triangle, it's obscured by trees or shrubberies. Same thing over here. Yes. Um, so basically what I want to do is I'm going to find out the distance that my dog can stay sitting and, uh, uh, and see the other dog. So if uh, you want to find the distance that's appropriate, if your dog is reactive, starts barking, the dog gets up, uh, snarls, starts staring at the other dog, or any of those things happen, you're too close. If I, once I can get my dog, now sometimes I'll use counter condition and I'll actually do this and have the dog looking at the other dog as it's crossing along the steel to find the, to identify the distance that we need to go. So let's say we've identified 50 yards. So once we get to 50 yards, let's say the flow of traffic on the trail is going this direction. And so I put the dog here next to me and I have the treats and I'm going to look over here and I'm, as I actually look over and I think there's uh, uh, the dog, oh, no, we're going to keep your focus here. Oh. Um, so I'm going to wait, and as soon as I see the dog is about to come out of the clearing, out of, behind the shrubs, and it's going to be in visual, I turn my eyesight down to my dog. Now, as soon as my dog looks at, sees the other dog, it's going to lower its head and start staring. So as soon as the dog does that, I'm going to wait about a half a second or one second, and I'm going to say, focus. Focus. And I'm going to give the dog the treat. Now, in Karen's book, she calls this uh, a watch. I use focus because I have watch as a different command. So what we want to do is we're so far away that the dog doesn't perceive it as a threat or anything to, to chase after. So we keep on practicing at this distance until the dog gives you what Karen refers to as autofocus. So it sees this. So what we do is we give the dog the opportunity to see the dog first and give it one second. If it doesn't look at us, then we give it the command word to focus and then it looks up at us and we reward it the same way we did when we're practicing. Focus. Um, after you've done this enough, because it comes one second after, what will happen is your dog is going to see the other dog and it's going to immediately look up at you because that's what we've been doing and practicing. Now, as soon as the dog looks up at you, Karen calls this the auto watch. I call it an auto focus. You should reward the dog richly. So what I would do is the first time you get focus, 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 focus. That was only four, but I would get five normally. We want the dog to be like, what the hell did I just do? Because I just got the mother load of treats. I need to be able to recreate that. Now, when you get an auto focus, that's like should be the highlight of your day. And that would be a great time to stop. And then we walk away. We don't go towards the other dogs. We just walk away. Next time we come back, we practice at that same distance, the 50 yards. And we keep practicing at this distance until you get five auto watches in a row. So the dog sees another dog and immediately looks up at you. 
and gets the other and gets the uh, gets the five treats in a row. When you get five in a row, then you're ready to start moving forward. Now the principle of counter conditioning is you want to associate the the whatever the dog is reactive to to the treat. So we do it at the same time. Well, what we're, uh, or so the dog is eating the treat while it's looking at the squirrel or a white dog or whatever it is. So in this case, we're, we're kind of using a principle of that, but we're getting the dog the opportunity to look at us. Now, yes, I, I, I just I saw that. We have a squirrel <laughs> right outside the window right here, so I'm going to use this to keep the dog looking here. Otherwise, we probably have a hole in the window as the dog goes through it. So basically, the idea is um, we're going to uh, keep on practicing this until we get five auto watches in a row. Then we go to 40, 49 yards, and we practice at that distance until we get five auto watches in a row. Then we go to 47 uh, yards, and we keep on gradually diminishing the distance until we get, uh, uh, he has no idea how, how, how lucky he is to not be uh, have a screen door there. Um, but basically, we're going to keep on collapsing the distance, and we're doing it progressively. So the dog is able to maintain its focus on you, or in matter of fact, not only maintain its focus, but when it sees another dog, instead of reacting to the other dog, it immediately turns its eyes away from you and looks up at you. Now, Karen's technique is for dogs actually to have what's called leash aggression. This is a little bit different. These dogs are just reactive to dogs in general, but the same principle applies. Now, what we're going to do is eventually when we get to the point where we can be right next to the path, you know, and this might take you a week or, or it would probably take you several weeks. Most people don't have the patience for this, and this is why they don't use this technique. But if you do it properly and maintain it every once in a while, you can have a dog that no longer is reactive to other dogs. So there we go. So basically, um, once we get to the point where we can be right next to the path and see the dog and your dog immediately is giving you the auto watch, then when we're out in a walk and we see another dog is walking down the block, what we want to do is try to position so that dog's going to walk on the other side. And when the dog gets to a certain distance, you just say, focus, the dog looks up at you, it's walking by and there's another dog walking here and it's just paying attention to you and ignoring the other dog. Now, once we get to this point where we're at this proximity, then we can actually do some other things like counter conditioning. The guardians here did talk to a trainer who had an idea that would be appropriate at a certain juncture, but not the way that he was going to do it, where his idea was just, we're just going to put a muzzle on this dog and throw it in a pit with 10 other dogs that are, and you know, hope for the best. In that case, we, would, we want to make sure that we, feel, that we feel confident. If the guardian doesn't feel confident, we can transfer anxiety to the dog. So sometimes we do want to use a muzzle. And if we introduce the muzzle in a good way, the dog looks at the muzzle as a positive, that can be a great thing, great tool to use. Uh, here you, I like the focus. Um, so the idea is eventually we're gonna get that dog close to getting comfortable being closer and closer without reacting to it. Now, once we get to that point, then we might do something where we bring a muzzle and we bring another dog in where we know the dog is one dog and it's not aggressive and we don't have to worry about that dog having a problem with our dog. And we might walk them together first. At first, we have them walking on either side. And the dog's used to walking near other dogs because we did the, uh, the focus exercise. But eventually, we can get to the point where the dog's walking side by side. After, they, after the walk, then we go to a neutral, uh, somebody else's backyard. We're in an apartment, so you don't have one. But uh, we go to somebody's yard where it's not that dog's, it's not your dog's. And we, have, we let them kind of linger off leash. Again, we have our dog muzzled to make sure that nothing happens. And we're watching our dog. If our dog gets stiff, it stops breathing, its hackles go up, it gives us indicators that it's uncomfortable, we will separate the dogs, maybe practice a little counter conditioning, which is again where you let the dog chew on the treat while it's looking at the other dog. And then we might maybe take another step closer to that dog and do some more counter conditioning until eventually they're, they're close to each other. And I might have the other dog, if I can control it right, have the other dog's butt right here. And I give my dog a treat, and eventually if I can control my dog, and or we have a muzzle here, we let it sniff the other dog. Dogs experience everything through scent. That's how they should meet. But because these dogs are reacting by sight, it's scumming up the process. So the auto watch and teaching, or excuse me in this case, uh, teaching your dog to focus on you as opposed to targeting the other dogs can help you collapse that distance and get your dog close enough where now you can start practicing social interactions with other dogs in an appropriate, safe environment to make sure. Now, I would never put a muzzle on a dog and throw it with 10 other dogs. That's ridiculous. But one other dog where she's a female, maybe I have a male, and then maybe there's some sexual, well, I understand the guardian's shaking her head, no, but if you get the right male with the right energy and we've collapsed that distance and gotten them gradually used to it, then now there's a little bit of a chemistry situation. I'm interested in this male. Right now, she's just reacting by sight. So the male, female, doesn't matter. It's a, it's a little furry dog. I'm going to react and go after it. 
So basically, uh, this is a long video, uh, but it, uh, it really encapsulates what we're gonna do for the, uh, the autofocus exercise. Now again, if you have a dog that is leash aggressive, I would suggest you can pick up Karen London's book, uh, Feisty Fido, or just go back to Dog Gone Problems and find other tips like this that'll help you treat your dog to behave the way you want it to.